Welcome to Stanley. We're staying at the Harbour Master's Cottage that was built around 1880. Peter and I are going to take a walk around town and show you some of the heritage buildings. Stanley was originally called Circular Head by Matthew Flinders when he navigated in the area. In 1826 the town was surveyed and a year later a port was established for the fine wool merino that was in the area which actually was a venture which failed. One has to only go to Highfield House to understand the reasons why this enterprise actually failed. And in 1842 the name changed to Stanley after Edward Smith Stanley. So come along with us and we'll show what there is to explore. The building behind me was the birthplace of Joseph Lyons. Was he a Joe Lyons or a Jojo Lyons? But I think as a Prime Minister of Australia, we'll call him Joseph Lyons. Very humble beginnings. He was also a Premier of the state of Tasmania and Tasmania's gift as their first Prime Minister to Australia. The Right Honourable Joseph Lyons was a Prime Minister of Australia between 1932 and 1939. That's a very auspicious year, 1939, because it was when the Second World War broke out. Okay, so a little bit of history there.
Just a little bit of trivia for those of you who are movie buffs. The film A Light Between the Oceans was filmed here in the streetscape behind me. Starred two of our Australian actors, Jack Thompson and Brian Brown. The film was filmed in 2014. In a previous life, this building was once the commercial hotel. The first hotel in Stanley, and it was built in 1847, principally for the offices of the Van Diemen's Land Company. They would congregate here with family and friends, and the hotel maintained a license through until the 1960s. Uh, now it has become a private residence. In this grave beside me lies the remains of Mary Bogue. Together with her son, when they drowned on the 20th of August in 1851. Mary was a native Aboriginal woman and she married a David Howie. Whilst they were at Robins Island making their way back on David's boat, otherwise known as the Howie, the boat met some treacherous waters around the nut and capsized. Um, as much as David survived, Mary and her son uh, weren't able to escape and drowned that day. Dancing at St. James Church. It was brought out to Tasmania in 1855. It was the first prefabricated church to come to Tasmania. Now, you thought you got the history from Jojo. However, I've done further research. It's actually an IKEA-inspired Presbyterian church. Hey, and what is the name of this Presbyterian church? It's called St. James. Now, that has a link because this year we are doing the Camino de Santiago, and that is the Pilgrim Walk of St. James. So there we go, we've already got a connection. But I think the St. James we're talking about is the Catholic version. Okay, see you guys. Here in 1826, employees of the Van Diemen's Land Company disembarked at this point. Behind me stands the Van Diemen's Land Company's bond store and that was actually designed by John Lee Archer. Now as you will be familiar, the Archers are a significant name in this part of Tasmania. Here in 1842, the Van Diemen's Land Company also issued a bounty of £50. That was for the capture of the last Aboriginal family. And what they actually did after that, they actually sent them to Flinders Island, uh, where the last remaining Tasmanian Aboriginals led out their existence. Very sad times for our colonial past. All right, thank you for that, and stay tuned for our next adventure. Bye.